My best mode being a comic is also my lowest mode being a comic. I played Carnegie Hall, and that was a big deal that I sold out Carnegie Hall. I thought I had a very, very good set. And just for fun, I had my friend Adam Sandler come on as a special guest after me. But when he walked out on stage, the amount of applause and laughs he got were so much more than me that I realized, oh my god. I didn't realize I was getting six level laughs. I thought I was getting eights and nines, and then suddenly he comes in with tens, and so that was both a high and a low. I'm doing stand-up comedy at a club in Manhattan. Certainly one of the highest highs would be when I taped uh, my special faces and sound. And then my lows, I mean the lows just keep coming. I was on stage and someone yelled out, next. That's just such a great heckle. It's one word, there's a strong X sound in there. Next. It really hurt. Really, it was a terrible set. It was really one of the worst sets. Extraordinarily bad. My highest high for sure was doing Late Night. I did uh, Late Night with Jimmy Fallon and absolutely the highest high. I would say the lowest low was probably when I first moved to New York. Didn't have a job. Uh, and I couldn't afford a mattress, so I was just sleeping on a pile of all my clothes in like a basement in Bushwick. And I was like, damn, <laughs> like this has to work out because I cannot keep doing this. Yeah, it ended up working out, but that was like rough. Give up for Jabuki, young white. One of my highest highs was opening for Tig Nataro at Town Hall. It was like the New York Comedy Festival. Her crowd is just great, so it was a great opening spot. I think that was like one of those things where it's just like, oh, like people you look up to are encouraging and like helpful to like younger comics, and that was like the first concrete example of that. So I think that was that was a big one for me. Don't you think any pizza can be a personal one if you cry while you eat it? <laughs> <laughs> the biggest and lowest moments I have normally they're pairs. I had shot Wolf of Wall Street, and then I hit about a year-long dry spell, and I had to re-up for my temping job. I was like, I was just on a set with Leonardo DiCaprio, and now I'm with Sheila, and she's teaching me how to file with their own unique little proprietary filing system. I'm a pop off. I just don't know if I feel comfortable lying to people. They're stupid tourists. Yeah, they're gonna end up like at a Panera Bread or getting human trafficked. Is that a verb, a human traffic? When they do it to you. What? Appropriate for this season, I was passed at the Comedy Cellar on a Friday night. I had to go after Jim Norton, who is just the funniest person in the world and destroys there. I was so nervous, I did maybe seven minutes, and it went, it went pretty damn well. And I remember taking the train back to Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and I was like, that's 25 bucks a set, on weekends, it's more. It was like, I, I made it. I was like, I don't see how it could get better than this. And I, it kind of didn't. I'm not a clean comic. People think I am, but I say dick and ass and cocaine and all this stuff. Okay, I'll be dirty. Honestly, one of my highest highs was when I found out that I got the part of Allie. Yeah, I was really, really excited and surprised. You just auditioned so many times as a comedian and actor. It's just nice when one of those times, like, this works. You're like, oh, everything aligned. It's actually happening. You're really funny. And I'm pretty psyched about it.